league tables, particularly when applied to state schools, give a really good general picture of how schools are doing, let you pin down what's, uh, what the relative performance of schools is. But, first of all, there are, there are measurement problems in them. I, it's the, you would think that public examinations were, were carefully marked, but the research that's been done shows that if you get two expert markers to look at the same GCSE script, if one of them gives a grade seven, then the chance of the second one giving a grade seven is only 55%. So this, even with the careful marking systems and the careful setting of questions we have now, there is a degree of uncertainty in, in, in the results. Uh, secondly, a school by and large is not an assembly of children who are all scoring the same amount. There is a, there is a spread within the school. And it matters much more that there are within this school children like yours than that every child is like yours that a child like yours can do well and is looked after and gets results which for them would be good is what you need. You don't need every child in the school to be like that. So an average, a single figure, is not telling you by any means all you need to know about the academic performance of a school. And I, for instance, have chosen a school which, if it's lucky, will get one or two children into Oxbridge each year but it has, therefore, half a dozen people at the top end, and that is the right environment for my daughter, because she likes to win. She likes to be in the top group. Uh, she's a bright dyslexic. She needs to be, not to have too much competition around, but it's a school which is really capable of getting children to Ox Oxford, but doesn't have that many in any one year. So that's the right environment for her, but it's way down the league tables. Uh, so there are, you're, in, in league tables you're dealing with averages and you're not seeing the whole spread and the whole spread is, is what matters. When I was choosing a sixth form college for my son, uh, who was someone who really found it very difficult to settle down and work, uh, he was always getting distracted, he was off doing other things, I needed a school that would be really good at screwing him to the to, to the floor in getting his getting his results. I chose a school which is not at the top of the league tables, but which did that very well. And he didn't come home for eight weeks because they kept him in at weekends because he hadn't done the work. And after his first half term, he decided he'd really like to see his parents a bit. So he started working and he got a decent set of A-levels at the end of it. But that's not something you can pick up from the league tables. And how good the sport is, how good the art is, all those sorts of other aspects of a school which you see by visiting it. Whether it's a school which is kind to geeks, where you can, you know, where you can be someone who is utterly buried in books and still have a good social life. That sort of thing you, you gather from, from getting up and going around a school. But nonetheless, league tables, it is great that the information is there, they're a good first guide, they're something to engage with, they're something to give you some ideas. Um, but the Good Schools Guide is very much about going beyond that because what, what matters in the end is not the league table for everybody but the league table according to your own criteria for your own child. How are you measuring each school by the particular criteria that apply to your child and you need to make your own league table from the information which is there, from the information which is available because the league tables are available, but it's the personal one that matters. The title of the session, Do League Tables Really Matter? The short answer you would expect me to give you, uh, looking after the Parent Power Sunday Times League Tables, is yes. Um, I spent last night at my daughter's 13th birthday party in the cricket club in Durham City, and as I looked around the room, I saw a group of very, very happy children. And as a parent, all of you in this room, me, Rafe, everyone, what we want more than anything for our children is for them to be happy. To be happy at home, to be happy at school. Put your child in the wrong school for them, 
and you will almost invariably end up with a miserable, unhappy child. Giving them a good education is one of the greatest gifts that uh, you can give them. So it's a vital decision for any parent at primary, but even more so at secondary school, I would say, to make sure that you find a secondary school for your children, which is well matched to them, well suited to their academic abilities. And league tables can help you do that. They are not the answer to every question, but they are an answer to an important question. So the aim of the Sunday Times tables is to set the bar academically very, very high. So we look at A star, A's and B grades at A level, and we look at A stars and A's at GCSE. Why do we do that? Because the aim of the tables is to show the highest achieving schools in the country and rank them in order. What it requires the user then to do is to make an assessment of where their child sits on that scale. If you have an academic high-flying child, a school in the top 100 probably will suit your, your child very well indeed. Rafe's touched on this with his own experience and I can touch on it with mine. Different things, different children require different schools. Also have a look at what examinations are included in the league tables. We have a situation in the country at the minute where the government league tables award a big fat 0% to most independent schools, to many independent schools, for their GCSE outcomes. For the simple reason that the government tables have now, they have now decided not to recognise international GCSEs, IGCSEs, which if you wander around the hall here, you will find many, many schools offer. It was only about seven or eight years ago schools were actively being encouraged to sit IGCSE because it was felt that GCSEs, as they stood in this country, weren't a very good examination, that there was too much coursework, there wasn't enough, uh, they weren't making students think enough. The government's now reformed GCSEs, they are now, by common consent, much harder, and the government wants everyone to sit GCSEs, including the independent sector, and many schools still don't and have resisted that, so the government has basically, in their, in their national tables, said IGS, IGCSEs are no longer recognised, which does nobody any favours because it is about as helpful to award a school 0% for a table that parents are going to read as it is to set the bar so low that everybody gets 100%. You're not giving anyone any information or doing anyone any service at all. Politics and education, uh, has been said before, don't really mix, and that is, a, I'm afraid, a classic example of it at the minute. You should not boil a school's achievement and what a school offers down to a single number or a single series of numbers. Um, that's true up to a point. When you go out and buy a new car, you want to know how fast does it go, how economical is it, uh, you know, what equipment does it come with. You would know more by a car if you didn't know, if, you know, if, the, if the manufacturer said to you, I'm terribly sorry, you know, we don't want to, you know, we haven't released what the fuel consumption figures are to national newspapers uh, because we don't want to be compared with uh, other cars of a similar type. So yes, league tables do matter. They give you information compiled on a consistent, not a random basis. It's perfectly right that schools show themselves in, the best, in their best light on a website and quote the particular examination statistic that shows them in that light but equally they ought to be prepared, and many of them are, most of them are. There's about 100 schools each year where we have to sort of root around and try and find the information, but three of the 400 ISC schools that feature in our table voluntarily give their exam results each year. They ought to be willing to be compared on a consistent, like-by-like -like basis with other schools in terms of their output. League tables are part of your decision-making process, I would suggest, not the whole of it, how do you measure value add and what metrics would you use to measure value add? Because to be a little cynical, there's a Ponzi scheme, right? If a school is super selective, they get a good pupil in, good pupil out. So mm -hmm. I'm curious how you would measure the value add and the growth in the school. And what kind of metrics would you look at? What kind of questions would you ask? It's a, the, there are various methods around. 
Um, most independent schools use a system called ALICE, which comes out of the University of, of Durham, but they won't tell you what the results are. But they will hint at them. They will say, we come top in value added, but they'll never show you the figures because ALICE doesn't allow the figures to be published. Uh, so there is, at least they're taking an interest in it. Uh, if you ever get a chance sit, to sit down with them, if they're ever talking to you one-to-one, -one, get them to show you the Alice information informally, because they will be scatter graphs, there will be progress charts, all sorts of... You know, if, you, if, if data is your thing, there will be lots of stuff there that you can relate to too easily. Uh, the, there is no good value added published for independent schools. Uh, the state system has a has a better system uh, from measuring kids when they're six or seven years old, again at 11, again at 16, and again at 18. So the data which is available on the, the government website and, and, and other websites will have, a, have some measure of value added and give you an idea. But these are if you, if you just look at the figures there, they tend to be very sensitive to, to outliers. So if you're a school in a bit of a rough area and you've got half a dozen kids that are really done badly, that can, that can sink the whole school. Uh, it tends to be uh, that schools with good value added are getting good results anyway, so there's not much of a difference between value added and extra results, but the data is there for state schools. Choose the school that you like. Choose the school that you like. If you, if, you, if you start off at the school with reservations about it as mum or dad, that is the wrong footing to get off with with a school. Choose as, if, if you like the school, there is every prospect that your son or daughter will like the school as well. Um, because there are no guarantees. You know, you might look at the school that gets 30 children a year to Oxford and Cambridge. But actually, if your child isn't one of those 30 mm. children in seven years or five years' time, who cares? You know, if that's the ambition that you have for your child, you are far more likely to find that ambition realised in a school where you like the teachers, you like the head teacher, where, because if you like them, the fact is they are giving off something that says that they, they have managed to relate to you, and ultimately, you need, you know, Children who have teachers who can relate to them are the children who are going to open up and blossom and do well. Schools where the relationships are stiff and formal and to whom you don't warm, well, you know, why would your son or daughter warm to that?